Yeah, definitely. One of the things that I saw on your, I think it was your Instagram, mm-hmm. was um, a few, like a handful of pictures of, um, like, let's say pots and pans. Yeah. Um, where I noticed there's like one of everything. So I'm thinking of my cupboard, for instance, mm-hmm. where I have like two, three, maybe even four, mm-hmm. like, small skillets and then medium Mm -hmm. skillets and then, Mm -hmm. um, you know, boiling pots that are somewhat identical in size, just like a different color or something. Um, what's your advice on that? Like in my mind, I don't know, like in case one gets scraped Mm -hmm. in case one's dirty in case I need multiples, what's like your thought process on that? Okay. So Typically, the method actually requires you to grab all the things under the same category as well so that you have a mental audit of everything that you own. So it sounds like you know how many pots and pans that you own, you know, just from how you were describing it just now. But what you would do is first you select the one that you love, the one that sparks joy, the one that you instinctively reach for. Right. And then that's your barometer of joy, you know, or like purpose. In this case, because sometimes like, you know, a vacuum might not necessarily spark joy or mop might not spark joy, but does it serve a purpose? And then you're able to go into it. It's like, okay, this one will be my back stock, right? Like that's my spare in case I need to upgrade it. And if you can confidently say that everything serves a purpose, then keep it. There's no right number for it because you might be, you might be like this avid cook who just uses a lot of pots and pans, right? For some other households, maybe they only need one of each. So we define what that so-called perfect number looks like to each of us. But I will actually advise um, clients as well, don't keep it solely based on fear. You know, like a lot of That's what I feel like it would be. It would be fear. Like once this one gets scratched, then I'll toss it and then I'll have this one. But then Mm -hmm. sometimes they do get scratched yeah. and then I still have it yeah. and still, still use it. So then the, you know, the so-called backup one, mm-hmm. you know, isn't still isn't used as much. So yeah, a lot of the stuff, if I'm thinking about my kitchen per se, mm-hmm. um, is fear like spatulas. Like I probably have like 16 spatulas yeah. and like they're all in the same spot. They're very organized in the same yeah. little area, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah, I probably only use maybe three of them. Yeah. And then you just have to be really realistic with yourself. It's like, you know, how many do I actually need? Um, it's, it's like what we we're saying earlier as well. You know, for some people, they might go from 13 to be like, okay, I only need three. But so for some people, it might be more of a gradual process as well. You know, you might be like, you know what, like I can just um, give these to a thrift shop or you might know someone who's like, you know, a college student or someone who's moving into a new home. You're like, oh, you know what, like take some of the things from my kitchen so you can fit out your new kitchen. And so I, I really believe that a lot of the times like we need to have that avenue to give. And it makes it a lot easier because when we don't know where where to give it, then we're just like, oh, you know what? Never mind. I'll just keep it for now. Yeah. 